Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Dice Throne Adventures. Dice Throne Adventures is brought to you by Roxley. It's for two to four players, ages eight and up, and games range anywhere from 90 to 120 minutes. You and your team of battle-hardened heroes have gathered, ready to set off across Crimson Sands to find and defeat the Mad King. But beware, you are not the first to travel this path. Many have tried before, and an army of loyal minions, as well as previously defeated heroes who chose eternal servitude over death, are ready to lay down their lives to end yours. You are certainly not yet strong enough for the final showdown, so you will need to gather loot and upgrade your abilities along the way. When the time comes, will you be ready to take the throne? So Dice Throne Adventures is an expansion to the popular Dice Throne battle game. And the core mechanics of this game still are very much key to this cooperative experience. However, it is a cooperative experience now. They've totally turned it on its side to some degree. And you really are working together to defeat the Mad King instead of fighting his arena. So with that said, we are not going to be diving in to how those battle mechanics work of the core game. If you want more information about Dice Throne in general, go check out Tom's review or any of the numerous videos we've done on the channel. But we're going to be focusing on all the new things in this expansion. And so one of the first things we're going to take a look at here is how this dungeon sets up. You'll see there's a series of tiles which outline the dungeon structure labeled one through three. Now, there's more tiles than you'll use in any particular scenario. So these dungeons are gonna be wide and varied every time you play. And the card showing setup is very straightforward. It shows you how to outline everything in the dungeon and shows you where the possible boss placements are going to be. And again, you're looking for the boss. You're trying to either get to the boss as quickly as possible and defeat him or scour the dungeon building yourself up and hoping to come back later for another go at the boss. So each of the scenarios set up pretty easily and based on the player count will dictate your collective health overall. So like in a four player game, everyone is gonna get 15 health a piece and it's deducted based on the number of players. And it also shows your starting CP, it shows your starting hand of cards, which is four in this case, in this first level and then the boss's CP, which starts at 10. So there's a lot of things about this as you travel through the dungeon that you gotta make choices. You're gonna to have to be battling the minions. You're going to be engaging with each other, helping each other out immensely to survive this dungeon and hoping collectively to get enough gold to hit the shop later to get items and more better cards for your character. Now, the interesting thing is that as you're traveling through this dungeon, we'll take a look at the tiles in a minute, but each tile has effects. And these effects are going to give you things, might be good things, might be bad things, and status tokens might be placed on your characters based on the tile that you enter, as well as giving the boss more power. So as you move through the dungeon, it allows the boss to power up for that ultimate battle at the end. Okay, so to start, all the players are starting on the Crimson Sand tile. Now, as you move into the dungeon, you can move as far as the first unexplored tile or the first tile that you run into, potentially, that might be engaged in battle with one of your fellow players. You'll want to stop and help them out, after all. You cannot move diagonal in the dungeon. You can only move orthogonal. Now, if you take a look at the tiles, they do wide and varied things. In the top left corner is generally what's going to affect you as the player. You might get an extra CP, maybe get more than one CP. Uh, but if there's gold, that's gonna be a, a party gold. It adds to the gold total on the tracker. And on the right side are the, all the boss things. The boss is gonna get CP, like I said. They are gaining in strength every time you move through the dungeon. And it also shows what minion spawns when you discover this tile. So you're looking at the three different classes of minions. You've got the green, the blue, and the purple, all ranging in abilities and powers. We'll take a look at the minions in a minute. And then at the bottom of the tile is generally something that affects you as the player. Um, things like, in this case, remove all status effect tokens on the active player. 
it might allow you to draw a card as well. Or you might have to discard cards. There's lots of possibilities on all these different types of tiles. And of course, there are many tiles here as well that affect the entire party. All things to keep in mind as you're traversing through this dungeon. Now, as you're exploring the dungeon, minions are going to reveal themselves. And they are wide and varied. Different levels, different powers, different strengths. And there's a wide, vast number of these. Now, the thing here is that your fellow players will be playing the minions and attacking. And you'll be doing the basic dice throne things here. This is where the battle mechanics come into play. You start with the upkeep phase, you end with the discard phase, and you do that battle mechanic that you've come to know from the original game. Now, the thing that's cool though, is that all the minions have an AI objective. So when they're doing their three dice rolls, you know exactly what they're trying to get. It's not a mystery, you're not like, oh, I guess we'll use this ability. No, you're gonna use what their AI objective is. That's the main goal of all their rolls. Every time they roll the dice, that's what they're trying to achieve. So that's pretty cool. I love that aspect of these minions. And of course they have the defense, all the things you've come to expect, spinning CP, and you can augment your stuff again by using cards, doing your attacks, and you'll do this. And hopefully you wipe them out in the first round. If not, that's fine because there's the health tracker to keep track of where they are in their health. And then your fellow players can come in behind you and engage in battle as well. And once you defeat a minion, then it's time for rewards. So you've defeated the minion. Now let's collect that reward. There is a really cool mechanic here. You're going to take a 20-sided dice as the players roll it, and the players will get to roll against this really handy table. Now, this is what's cool, is that based on the level of minion that you've killed, it'll show you on the minion which level you get to roll against. But you might be collecting bonus damage based on your roll. You might get extra CP or gold. The gold, again, will go to the party gold. And, or you might get a card that you can basically collect and identify at a later time, spending five gold at the shop to do so. Um, but there is wide and varied. You might even get health back based on what you roll on this table. So this is a really neat mechanic as you're moving through the dungeon and the players get to collect rewards based on defeating those enemies. I think they've done a really nice job here, giving you that sense of like loot drop. I love it so much. So you'll continue this way, moving through the dungeon until you find the boss tile. Now you have a couple options here. You can say, well, I don't think we're well equipped enough to deal with this boss, so we're going to flee the dungeon. And if you do, you get to go to the shopkeeper and spend all your gold and re-equip yourselves, hoping to come back to the dungeon to fight another day. However, it might be time to take on the boss. So you'll find all the boss related things. You have a standard card, you have the leaflet showing its status tokens and things that it might use throughout the, throughout the battle. Its own deck of cards, of course it's health tracker. Now, the boss unfolds, it's got the same style of uh, card and mechanics basically that you do as the players. Now, the cool thing here is that all these bosses have really interesting, cool backstories. You gotta read them and check them out um, for yourselves because it really adds a lot of flavor to the game, which I enjoyed quite a bit. But the boss reveals himself and all this CP he's been collecting throughout the game, he gets to use right now. So what you'll do is you'll look at his deck of cards and you're gonna separate out all his upgrade abilities. And then you'll shuffle those up and you'll look at how many uh, CP points he has to spend and he'll start flipping cards and he'll just start spending as much as he can spend. And if he gets to a point where he cannot upgrade, he'll just discard that upgrade card and gain a CP back just like you would when you discard. So giving him more options to move through that deck and maybe get a couple more upgrades before he runs out of uh, CP altogether. Now, this is bad. I mean, potentially the boss is going to be super powerful when you get there. However, the nice thing is that he spent his CP to get all these upgrades right now. So through the battle, he has less options. However, you know, he is super powerful. So you really do have to collectively work together because 
based on the scenario and the player count will determine his health starting health which could be you know really high somewhere 50 90 points of health that you have to deal with where each of you might only have 15 health so you really have to work together to defeat this boss so again as the core mechanics of dice throne go that's the battle that you'll engage with when you fight the boss you have status tokens Again, you have the upkeep, you have discard phase, all that stuff that you normally would do in Dice Throne is all engaging with the boss, as well as the boss. The boss is gonna be drawing cards, spinning CP, and you're gonna be doing all those things that you're used to doing in Dice Throne. Trying to defeat the boss. And of course, like with any good bosses, as well as what you have as a character, there's a wide variety of status tokens that might get applied and to either the boss himself or to you as the players. So, the handy chart in the manual showing what all the different status tokens do and so forth. And then if you do defeat the boss, there's an outcome based on the scenario. And if you lose, there's also the outcome. So those are all things to keep in mind as you're playing and as you're scouring the dungeon, trying to get more powerful because the cards and items that you acquire do carry over through the different scenarios. So leveling up grinding so to say through the dungeon is worthwhile um, because as you engage with these bosses and I only got to play with the two bosses I had the barbarian and the gunslinger uh, but both were wide and varied and really really powerful and uh, I have to say I did not defeat either one in my two and three player game that we did so it was rough it was rough uh, but it, the thing that's really cool is that it kept me hungry I want to go back for more I can't wait to play again and I've just got a limited set in this prototype but I'm super excited to play this game fully. So again as you complete the scenario maybe you chose to flee instead. Anyway next steps might be to go to the shop and this is where we're going to take the party's gold and you're going to spend gold to acquire more cards and these cards what is really cool here is that there is equipment now in this game. Things like armor and so forth. You know, I am not actually going to flip through a bunch of these cards. I'm gonna show you just a set, maybe two sets of them, of the different levels, just because I don't wanna spoil a bunch of what is upcoming for you when you experience this game. But I mean, there's things like leather armor. There's a regenerating orb, a blood amulet, golden crown, all different levels of types of equipment that can be found. And if you, again, if you found items in the dungeon uh, that are cards that are face down in front of you this is your opportunity to get them revealed and then add them to your deck for enhancing your character as you go back to the dungeon for another round of punishment all right i just want to take a few moments and talk about the experience overall you know i really enjoyed dice throne as a standalone the combat system how you upgrade your characters and just the presentation from like season season one to season two has been just incredibly polished and beautiful and the fact that they're taking season one heroes now making them season two super excited about that now i really enjoyed the battle aspect of this game and the fact that they took that into this co-op experience is just amazing i love co-op games so i'm already predisposed to like that sort of thing but this dungeon crawl and how you can help each other play and really Playing with your cards face up is the way to go, I feel like, in this game. Because it comes a conversational piece as you explore the dungeon and maybe even go off on of multiple paths and then converge at spots. And the fact that you can jump in and help someone else in a battle and finish that battle and then you all collectively are working on getting gold and then hitting the shop at the end. And that's, for me, something particularly nice about this version of the game. I've heard the developers talk about how much they love Diablo. And I can't agree more. I love that video game so much. And they've really tried to capture some of those experiences where you're grinding it out, finding the better loot, getting gear, finding legendary items, then having them identified at the shop. And having those cards face down in front of you and you can't check them out until you can get them identified. Pretty enticing and keeps the game fresh. And the fact that the dungeons rotate up and change, some really neat things here. So you definitely, if you like Dice Thrones as a standalone combat game, that combat still exists and the core mechanics of that are still here. But if you want to take your game to the next level, this is definitely something worth checking out.
All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview. Everything you've seen here has been in prototype form, so keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now, with that said, I have to say that, you know, Dice Throne as itself was one of my favorite games, but this expansion, taking it to this co-op experience, has elevated the game to something incredibly special for me. Now, if this does look like something of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. All right, folks, well, I think that's it for me. And until next time, we'll see you at the table. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.